I was a derelict, but I was always a good person, right? Never wanted to hurt anybody, never wanted to kill anybody. I did fight people, but I would, I would always stop when they started bleeding. And I'm like, even if they were still talking shit, I'm like, we're done. Like, you're bleeding. I, I don't know. Like, I can't, like, beat. You know, I, I'm just, I just always was like, I know what my limits are. Hmm. Um, uh, so I don't, so I think I did the best under the, the circumstance. And the more information I got, the more I learned about stuff the more informed I was to make better decisions. And I've always been someone who's looking for information like that. I'm like, I'm information hungry. Um, yeah, I like learning stuff. So like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the the more you know with the rainbow and the star, mm -hmm. it's like, it's true. The more you know, like the sweeter shit gets uh, or the less painful life is, right? Or rather, the more happiness there can be, right? The more serenity there, there can be. There will always be pain and all that stuff, but you want to like, be able to manage it. And you get the film to do that with information, I feel like. Yeah, which you got through your through your experiences. Right. Um, in terms of like the, the loot racking, then to going to working in that job at the mailroom, when you were loot racking, did it feel like, you know, I've heard about the like the high level rackers that exist for Get, yeah. getting down to getting down to like uh to skill and just almost breaking it down to a science to the point where it really does become like a, a career and i've always wondered during that time period at like the climax of you of you racking like that was it like a full-time job did it feel like that was it like you wake up you go to the store this at this hour and then this and how was that it sucked um so when i was doing it for fun it was fun and then when it became, when I was like an adult and I needed money to pay for things and to pay rent and to, you know, it totally sucked to have to rack for money, right? Um, it became like an actual job. It was stressful, except that this job I could get arrested, right? And it sucked because I knew dumb people, straight up idiots who had like legitimate jobs who had, you know, their lives together, but were idiots, right? And here I was thinking that I was like, you know, smart guy having to do this this thing right this gross thing for money it's like i should be able to figure this out i should be able to make money legitimately and not have to um you know because racking it's like gut-wrenching it's like i need i need like you know life happens i need six hundred dollars by the end of the week kind of stuff and it's like okay um and like every night is new year's eve and everybody's like out every night writing graffiti like fucking drinking doing coke and like smoking all night you know and it's like I have to, I like to wake up early. I've always woke, woken up early, right? Like before the sun even. And like I'm up and at them and like, you know, just like psyched to be alive, right? So, um, you know, kind of staying out all night wasn't really my thing. Kind of needed the drugs for that. Um, but I preferred to be in and, you know, um, I, I just like the sort of like uh, scheduling of like, sleeping when I'm tired and then waking up early. And then, uh, so rehab was like really good about, I have these spots. We hit that spot like two weeks ago. Now would be a good time to circle back to that one. He may have even had a racking book, which is super dumb. But like um, <laughs> back then it was like, you know, a great idea. He was super tech. Um, but, you know, we mentally knew about what spots we wanted to hit and we would hit them methodically. And... Um, you know, it's it was fucking whack. So like we were good, right? And it was good to have somebody to do it with. That takes a lot of the edge off. But we couldn't necessarily do it all the time because we're two different human beings and we have different lives going on. So sometimes we'd be like, yo, I need to go racking. And I'd be like, okay, go racking then. And he'd be like, I need to go racking, Kun, like, come on. And it's like, all right, cool, we'll go racking. Or, um, and, it, and that just sucks, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, uh, I'm not even gonna like pretend like, but I was like super good. Like, right, I, I at one point I thought I was co convinced I was the best rocker in New York City. Although there was Hefs who was super good and I'm not sure that I was ever better than him. But I think before I knew that he was around, like it was like me, Adder and Hefs, I think were the best rockers at some point. Um, that could rack anything from anywhere at any time, pretty much. Um, can like always come off, you know what I mean? Um, like, you know, to to some extent, you know, you can't always, always, but you know, 
Um, yeah, that shit was fucking horrible. As I remember, just like, like after I moved out of Paul's place, um, roommate situation, having to pay rent, being cool guy, staying out all night, and and like somehow like needing to like fall back on racking to like because I would spend all of my money that I worked that I got from a life or whatever job. You know, you just spend it. You know what I mean? You get money to spend, like, no value. That was the problem with racking is that mm-hmm. money really didn't have the value that because I didn't, wasn't working hard for it. And then when I was working hard for it, it didn't seem like a good um, return on the effort, right? Meaning um, when you were working a job and getting paid? No, no, no. The racking. It was like, when, well, yes, while I was working and I would still need to go racking to supplement my income, the racking didn't seem to be giving me enough, mm-hmm. right? I'm like, I should be paid more for racking. I'm that good. This isn't paying me enough. And then we found different things to rack that were paying more, which was actually bad because then I was like racking more. Um, So it took me, so I was like, but I was like aware of this. I was aware that it sucked, that I'm too smart for this kind of, like, it's just, it's just not the way I want to see myself in the future. Um, But like street cred, right? So like, and I'm good at it. So, but like, I don't, want to have to do this i haven't even like you know i hadn't begun to explore any kind of like legitimate sort of like source of income other than just kind of like working at the homie shoe store or whatever so which doesn't really go anywhere either there's no upward mobility there you have to sort of still make something of yourself and that really is work also and then mm-hmm. i have to invest time and effort into which i w- was not good at I, I was not good at working at something so like everybody else was like either in college Right. Um, or had like or were close with their parents. Right. It just had, you know, something else going on. And we were like we were just kind of like Daryl's kind of out there, but liked hanging out with like people who were like in college or had something going on or like, you know, did something music, photos, like writing something. People who did something and graffiti writers, but also people who knew stuff about stuff and who were like learning shit, um, like art people, basically. Um, so, but it's like hard. It's like, you know, you know, just hanging out basically yeah, for yeah. years until like, you know, you're like, look, you gotta fucking like do something. Um, sorry to keep answering my own questions, but then what changed that was I got, um, I, get, I think I did the Infamy documentary. I was working at um, A Life, did the Infamy thing. That came out. The police saw it or Vandal Swat saw it. They like came in to A Life with stills from the thing. And they were like, yeah, you're under arrest. And I was just like standing there at the podium, like, oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. Oh, oh, this is okay. This is happening right now. Okay. And then went to jail. And then like, so long story short, and I hated court. I was just telling someone the other day, like I haven't been to court in so long. It's like the court sitting in court in those fucking like benches and like the whole thing of like just being in court all the time for something. And I haven't been in court in so long. And I'm like, I do not miss that for anything. Anyway, the uh, I was on probation for five years from that, right? And, right, I mean, yeah, I mean, but also like whatever, like, you know, it's like five years probation. With the exception of like having a shitty probation officer that didn't understand how awesome I was. And then um, having to do like drug tests that I thought I was beating because I was drinking the orange drink from GNC. <laughs> thought, emphasis on thought. Um, it was, I saw it as a good thing because I was like, yo, I'm gonna take this opportunity to like figure shit out and like do me and like, and you know, meanwhile, like people were doing stuff. I had like lots of like mentors, like Futura, Espo, Twist, like Reese, like all these dudes doing stuff that were graffiti writers that were doing stuff that not, wasn't necessarily graffiti, which I thought was like the worst thing you could do as a graffiti writer, like to grow up and professionally write graffiti, gross. So I was like, but you don't have to do, you could do whatever. You could do like what what the possibilities and thanks to those guys for letting like a smelly, like crazy, like, you know, kid hang around. They saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself. And they, which inspired me to like, be able to like, kind of like come up with stuff. And A-Life guys like Rob, Tony, Arno, Tammy, they were just like, yeah, you can come, you can come and hang out. And like, you want a job? And I'm like, for me, you know, like, cool. And like, I was just crazy when I think about it. But again, they saw something I didn't see in myself, which was great. And um, I learned a lot. 
started making t-shirts, spending all the money on weed, of course, but like, whatever, you know, I started doing things and I saw, so I started creating value outside of like racking and like, you know, standing up for my homies and like beating people up at parties and stuff. You know what I mean? It was like, there's, but like also the scene was expanding, mm. right? Or it was creating and then it was like actually expanding. Like people were waiting online for shoes. People were starting clothing brands with like actual business plans. And like, you know, like things were like starting to become like a real thing, right? And um, like the scene that exists now is just starting. And it just seemed like, oh, okay, there's like money here to be made or something. Uh, but everybody's whack. Absolutely everybody who's taking advantage of this is whack because I've never seen you before. Like nobody knows you. You don't hang out. Like you're just some dude with t-shirts. Like fuck you. You're whack to everyone all the time. If I didn't know you or somebody, you, nobody could vouch for you, you were whack because the streets still, right? That's where street work came from were for people who were like around on the streets with some creative vision and that's what, was, that's what it was. Then all, like everybody started j like jumping in and it became like this colorful, like all over print thing with sneaker brands attached to it. And it was just like, everything's whack, everybody's whack. Super hater, I made hating an art. Those skills didn't pay any bills though, but I was like so about it. And I just like, you know, I'm like, oh, I want to make t-shirts too. Like this, like, this is a real thing with real people, mm -hmm. but also you can't have it because it's a crew. And it was like, a weird, I had to figure this shit out. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So the five year probation gave me like a exit out of like having to rack all the time. Um, like that push that I needed that I wouldn't have done myself necessarily, or it would have taken longer, you know, just like. I saw that opportunity. I saw it as an opportunity to like, you know, well, you want to do something different. You want to fucking like take your rightful, like, you know, place and like this whole like shit show and like maybe kind of like figure shit out or whatever, or like, or you're desperate enough to actually fucking have to need to do something else. You can't do this forever. You're, 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 if you get arrested on probation, you're going to jail. I had gotten used to jail. The last time I got arrested, I gotten used to it. I was like there for two weeks and I was just like, whatever which scared the shit out of me because jail sucks yeah. and the people in there are whack and you have to dumb yourself down just to get along. And I was just like, yeah, it's cool. Like, it's on TV. You know what I mean? I like was down kind of. And I was like, oh, this is bad. Like, ah, uh, like, and so I was like, cause I do illegal stuff. Like I could be here like more, this is whack. Um, so I, you know, I just kind of like, didn't like where my life was headed basically. And I, you know. Yeah. 